بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد This body is an amanat and this amanat should be looked after well We should be very particular about what we consume إن الشيطان لا يجري من الإنسان مجر الدم Shaitan flows in the body like how blood flows in your body فضيكو مجاريه بالجوع والعش Tighten and constrain Iblis through hungerness and thirst. So a believer eats with one stomach and a kafir eats with seven stomachs. The ulama commentators have explained that number one, this kafir was referring to the specific one when Nabi alayhi salam narrated. Number two, Nabi alayhi salam was explaining a believer in how he abstains from dunya in a kafir how avarice he is of dunya so a mu'min a believer is not all the time out to satisfy his desires unlike a kafir number three Nabi alayhi salam is encouraging the people of iman not to over consume and that's a sifat of a believer as for a kafir, but like how the animals consume and they eat food, the kafir also consumes and worries about food. Number four, Ya Nabi alayhi salatu was speaking about a believer who takes the name of Allah and a kafir who does not take the name of Allah as if shaitan is a partner in that meal and a believer does not make shaitan in a partner in the meal which means there will be baraka in that meal and a kafir will not have baraka number five a believer whose iman is complete where he controls his de desires and a kafir who engages in sin and ma'asiyat and is engaged, engaged in all of this disobedience, you cannot compare the two. That's why a believer who is kamil complete will eat with one stomach, and a kafir sunnah will be eating with seven stomachs. Imam Nawi has mentioned that the most apt meaning is that some believers eat with one stomach, and many kuffar eat with seven stomachs. So we have to be very particular because that will have a direct impact on our ibadah and likewise conditions on earth are based on our amal and conditions on akhirat likewise. You are what you eat. Hassan Basri has mentioned Adimu Qar'aba bil Jannah Constantly knock on the door of Jannah it will open up. And how is that our oh, Hassan? Qala bil Jew al by a person being hungry and thirsty. So some of them I have said in this zamana and era where people are weak, we should try to consume, but the middle road would be that each person should build a capacity of eating where we do not love to eat, but eat to love. So some people, that's their occupation that's their hobby that's their pastime but we should eat enough that will be sufficient for us and not over indulge a person burped in the company of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he was told iqtasir min jusha'ika fa inna atwal nasi ju'an yawm al qiyamah that contain yourself because on the day of Qiyamah, those people will be most hungry who fulfill their ambitions in dunya. Those people who ate most in the world will be mostly hungry in Akhirat. So we have to see that we be very particular. In the riwayat of Abu Huraira, ما شبي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاثة أيام نبي عليه السلام never satisfied satiated his appetite 
for three consecutive days from barley bread until he departed from this dunya. Not even three days passed where he could even fill his stomach. Inna ahl al-shib'i fi dunya Those people who satiate themselves in dunya will be hungry in akhirah. Umar used to say, Iyakum wal bithna Be careful of gluttony and overeating. فَإِنَّهَا ثِقْلٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ Because this will be a burden and a load while you are alive. نَتْنٌ فِي الْمَمَاتِ And it will be a stench and a burden at the time of death. وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالْقَسْتِ And stick to moderation because this is beneficial for your body. As the Chaqiq Balkhi, رحمة الله عليه وسلم say, الْعِبَادَةُ حِرْفَةٌ that worship is a type of a business, it is a type of a trade, it is a type of profession. Hanutuha al khalwa and its store is seclusion. Wa alatuha al maja'a and its instruments, its goods, its commodities for this business is hungerness, not over indulging and dedicating our time and energy and resources because firstly resources are needed in preparation how much work time energy goes in that and then the consumption itself for that bin ayash used to address himself and say Ayyu shayin takhafin. what are you fearing are you fearing hungerness la takhafi dhalika don't fear that why because you are more disgraceful and more low. Nabi alayhi salatu wassalam and sahaba radiallahu anhum used to go through days and days of hunger. So don't fear hungerness. Don't fear hungerness. Kahmas ibn al-Hassan was in the era of Hassan Basri alayhi, used to say Oh my Allah, you've made me hungry. You've given me limited food, limited clothing. In the darkness of the night, you've given me tawfiq. What good action have I done that you've given me all these bounties? That I don't sleep at night, I don't have a lot of clothing, I don't over-satisfy my desires. There must be some good I've done that you've given me these bounties. Another sheikh used to say, when his sickness and hungerness reach its climax, Ilahi ibtalaytani bil maradhi wal O my Allah, you have tested me with sickness and hungerness. But kathalika taf'alu bi awliya'ik. But this is what you do with your close friends. Do you involve them in difficulties, hardships, sickness? فَبِأَيِّ أَمَلٍ أُؤَدِّي شُكْرَ مَا أَنْ أَمْتَ بِهِ عَلَيَّ I have no idea and no clue what amal I should do to show my gratitude and gratefulness to you. I do not know what amal I should do to show gratitude. Look at their vision, look at the way they looked at things. Let us look at the way we are looking at things, in what aspect, in what avenues they understood as a bounty and ni'mat of Allah. Sahal Tastari rahmatullahi his uh, habit was to stay hungry for long periods. And remember, when we stay hungry, one was they used to fast often. Secondly, even even it was iftar and sehri, it was on just kajur and water, all limited quantities of food. He used to say that there isn't a great amal on the day of Qiyamah than a person leaving fudul ta'am, excessive eating. Why? Because he is following the sunnah of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, where he had an optional, it was optional. It wasn't forced hungerness, but they chose the route of abstinence and not indulgence. 
You say, لا أعلم شيئا أضر على طلب ال على طلاب الآخرة من الأكل. I don't know anything more harmful for the seekers of akhirah debt than overconsumption. وضعت الحكمة والعلم في الجو. If you want wisdom, knowledge, cash, then it is in hungerness. ووضعت المعصية والجهل and disobedience and ignorance has been hidden by consumption and overindulgence. ما صار الأبدال أبدالا The abdals have not become abdals except through empty stomachs and silence staying awake at night and خلوة secluding yourself from the creation and engaging yourself with Allah the creator if we look at the system of the world and the battle the Illuminati who owns and controls the monthly national corporations the food chains the food supply literally humanity is consuming poison whether the foods are laced with high fructose syrups, nitrates, pesticides, bovine growth, hormones. These compounds are there to make people lethargic, unhealthy and uh, eventually to crash our biological systems, to cause a collapse because we are consuming poisons. And this is all controlled by the new world order if we look at one entity and that's the idea to control the regulatory bodies so they pass and approve the harmful and disprove and don't authorize the beneficial so if we look at just the US amongst the worst statistics in the world and health scenarios is found there as well so people are onto more pills, more treatments, more surgeries. They every day taking mountains and mountains of pills to stay healthy. And the state is paying for this. Now, the FDA is there to benefit mankind, but seems like it's engineered to harm. Let's go through a few factors. On drugs which have known safety problems, there are no warning labels. Then, there is an over-influence of government officials who regulate. So when they need something approved, they approve it. Then, all clinical trials which have been performed, the results which are negative are not publicized. An effort has been made to keep the data secret from the public. So if they did 100 tests, 200 tests, eventually they came to a test which was beneficial. They will pu publish all the results which showed benefit and no results which indicated harm. Now people are consuming this drug as if people have become guinea pigs and these drugs are launched. And all the harms that have been listed, nobody knows about it. Then, doctors and scientists who are benefiting from these approvals, there is no regulatory body to see that these people who are writing or doing researching, there is no conflict of interest. Yet they get consulting fees. So this is not disclosed. Then pharmaceutical products are advertised as if drugs have been made legal, have been legalized. And more than half those drugs which have been served are prescription drugs. If you look at half of American adults, they literally on drugs. And of that half, almost half, say they felt and perceived and experienced the negative side effects of taking prescription medication. 
So most of these side effects don't go, they go unreported. There's no legal requirement on doctors or drug companies to record all the known side effects. If you look at the Journal of Medical Association, prescription drugs currently kill approximately 100,000 Americans. Yet, advertising is legal, fictitious diseases are promoted, and how many hundreds of thousands of percent of markups these pharmaceuticals take benefit from, only Allah knows. They say pharmaceuticals are the fourth leading cause of death in America. So we've got these, these conglomerates, Big Pharma, Pfizer, GlaxoSmithKline, etc. So it's one big scam. Then if we look at more, and we've discussed this previously, where doctors, the FDA, FDA, which is the supposed to be the beneficial regulated body, they repeatedly have banned and confiscated herbs and nutritional supplements that compete with prescription drugs. Now, why would they have arm raids on alternative medicines, alternative medicine clinics? Why would they confiscate uh, computers, uh, health practitioners? Why would they be threatened? What's, what's the motive behind all of this? Then why has a scientific information been censored for foods that are beneficial? Whether it's fruits, whether it's herbs, whether it is anything else. Whereas harmful food additives and other harmful ingredients which cause cancer has been approved. So harmful artificial fat, hydrogenated oils, which even the World Health Organization has urged its members to outlaw since 1978. But all these products have been proliferated in the market and has become common. In the US, the number one nation in the world per capita where people have been jailed, incarcerated, most uh, mentally, mental disorders in the world, obesity, the highest uh, amongst in the world, diabetes, cancer, all other diseases. So we look at this entire system has been sabotaged and humanity have been made and converted into guinea pigs to suffer the effects yet pay for it also. So if we had to say there is a scam greater on earth and there is no bigger scam than this. Then if you look at toxic substances, that act was enacted in 1976 and there are approximately 60 to 80,000 commercial chemicals but testing for only two, 300 are restricted. So why was this done? Why? We've discussed previously fluoride and the harms of fluoride. It's uh, one of the most poisonous toxic chemicals on the face of the earth. And it's a principal ingredient in rat poison. So in just one tube of uh, toothpaste, there is enough fluoride that will kill a child if it's consumed at once. One tube of toothpaste will kill a child if it's consumed. We put in that every day in our mouths than the water that we drink in every day. So we have to understand that one is sodium fluoride, which is different from organic calcium fluorophosphate, which your body needs. And that's a natural thing which strengthens your bones and your teeth. So calcium fluorophosphate is edible, it's beneficial, but the non-organic sodium fluoride, which is used in water, etc., which is found in certain bottled water, soft drinks, juices, milk products, and the list is endless. We need to do some research on this. But again, if you're not going to worry about what you eat, then how will you worship Allah, how you should be worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us try to do some research and get into these aspects and see that we are protected from this. The amal for today is to visit the sick. Nabi alayhi salam asked, who is there who has visited the sick today? Abu Bakr got ready. Who is there who is fasting? Abu Bakr anhu. Who followed a janazah? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Nabi alayhi salam said, any person who has these qualities here, illa dakhal al jannah. He's a jannati. May Allah give us to fikr. Make an amal wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.